be here. All right, it's time to introduce our speaker for today. So please welcome from Charleston, Josh Silverman of Zephni. Uh, good morning, One Million Cups Columbia. Uh, before I get started, before I forget, I promised my kids I'd take a selfie. They're always like, what's dad do during the day? So if you could just um, wave or smile, say hi. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you. Well, and thank you to the doc and to Sergio for getting me up here and uh, and the high test coffee from Deneen, the coffee queen, which was just so serious. I love it. One of these two. That one, uh, let's take a look. That's our opening. No. It should say Zafni one one MC. I'll ad lib till we go. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is not my first startup. It is my first technology startup. Uh, the first startup I ever got into. Um, I, I grew up in family businesses. I grew up in small businesses. A lot of like what you all are doing. Uh, family run. I love that dynamic, crazy me. Um, I like to, to see how those businesses evolve and help them grow. And over time, I found I really had a knack for connecting technology with those companies and making it really understandable. Uh, in 2006, I threw off the corporate yoke and started my own consulting firm uh, down in Charleston called Jericho. And we worked all over the state and uh, down into Georgia, up into DC with growing companies that were having just that very issue because the same biz businesses that are you know, one and two people, now they're 20, now they're 50, they're still kind of dealing with the same issues. How do we use technology efficiently? How do we um, not let technology get in the way of what we're doing, but really complement what we're doing? Uh, I tend to be much more on the front end of businesses, either it's business development work, or um, really how, that's that's the one. There it is. And, or, <laughs> what was it called? Oh, well, it's a PDF file. Yeah, right, okay. So uh, the PowerPoint wouldn't find it because it's a PDF file. So there it goes. Great, so you can go to view, and then full screen. There should be a full screen there. Great, now how do I control it? Uh, see, again, again. Control the uh, um, I would go probably down there. Oh, this one, thank you. Okay, cool. So, um, yes, I was ad living, so that doesn't count. Yeah, great. Um, so, uh, Zafni, so what do we do? Uh, people ask us that all the time. Um, we empower humans uh, who are doing research by using technology. So, um, let's say you want to look up something cats or, uh, I don't know, a disease. If you're trying to look up something about heart disease, and you're going into Google, or Bing, if you're really going to use Bing, what does it do? It's geared for speed. It wants to return fast answers to you because it's mostly ad-based. If you've looked like the kind of above-the-fold Google results these days, mostly sponsored, which is great for Google. But they are in business for business. They are not necessarily in business to return to you relevant information. They're not necessarily in business to return to you information that is more than localized because they want you to go to the local information in your language. So if you're a, a scientific research person or a government research person, or uh, we'll talk about, about Zafni ICE, which is our intelligent compliance engine. We built it for compliance officers, people who are dealing with money moving all over the world. That's multiple languages. If I have to research somebody in Ghana, who knows the word for money laundering in Ghana? No one, right? I don't either. Money. 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 What happens? It's a site that has malware. It's a site that exposes your computer to tracking, cookies. All those things get in the way of doing really solid research. So what we did is we went back and said, how can we make research better? How can we make the process more effective? Let's strip away all the advertising. Let's strip away all the nonsense about localized results and return relevant results to people. So this is a breakdown of our basic technology. Uh, I did not write the code for this, so if anybody's a technical person, uh, our founder would be happy to answer those questions for you. 
But so if you're entering a search term, maybe you're searching for cats, but you really meant kittens. Google's going to go, here's your cat. Maybe you meant cat food. Maybe you wanted the, you know, maybe it's the word in French. Maybe you're trying to search in a foreign language. So like all those variables that come in on the front end. If you're searching for cars, how does Google know what kind of, maybe you're searching for car repair. All of those variables, we said, let's put all that up front. We're going to use AI to build out the keyword derivations, so like the misspellings, the other words, those types of things. We're going to pull it into our search process. We can search not only the open web, but we can search any database you want to attach us to. We can read PDFs, search through emails. Like you just tell us where the information might live. University databases, we can plug into that too and put it all in line with the other results. Uh, and we pull that all back into our database. Our database can read and translate from over 50 different languages globally. We're searching in those countries. So if you want to search for something in Japanese, we're searching servers in Japan for their results. And we're using a lot of the tendencies that these big search engines have to index things, but not actually return those results in a really, like, like a library, like a library would, right? Mm -hmm. You want to go in the library here for a book on something, you're going to have 10 books on that something. If you go to Google and look for that something, it's going to return to you the top five ads or the things that maybe a bunch of users thought or maybe someone really loaded up those pages with keywords. And we wanted to get around that. So all that gets back through. We use natural language processing. We optimize the sentiments. We're going to tell you whether or not it came from Twitter. We can pull all of that together. And this is the real engine that makes our products work. The first place we decided to solve for this was in the compliance industry. If you, if all the investment in fintech has been on the front end, the sexy stuff, cryptocurrency, trading, and all these cool things, and the back end, the people that are doing research on humans is getting left in the cold, and they're throwing bodies at this problem. Traditional search, um, traditional compliance officers are using Google and spreadsheets. So we know that it's ineffective, but that's the tool they have, or they have really, really expensive enterprise level tools. And we said, let's use our technology to help those people first. So we created Zafni Ice. It's, this is screenshots. It's, this is a live program. We launched it. We have our first customer. Uh, we're really trying to expand more rapidly. Um, search by languages. We can automate it for you. Return all these results based on the relevance. So what was that word, that keyword in, in the, for, for uh, money laundering? Right, so we're not only going to search for money laundering and Lex Luthor in that country, we're going to translate the word into whatever the native dialect is and search in those search engines for that name in that country. You're going to get much more relevant results. And you can see where you can start to map this type of thing to scientific research. If you're a heart researcher at USC, you want up-to-date information, but that may be going on in Japan. They may not translate their stuff into English, so you won't see it. Um, if you are in the government and you're trying to get all of this data together, again, doing, uh, let's say, terrorism research and trying to understand what's going on, these things are being published in all sorts of places, social media, on the web, websites, dark web. We can, we can look at all that information and sort, sort based on relevancy and bring it all back to a really easy to use dashboard. It takes about 10 minutes to learn how to use. It's really, really cool. There's a lot of um, hard work that, that went into making it simple. Um, we're an Oracle Silver Level partner. Uh, our goal is to really build through partnerships, through direct business development. The, our first product is in compliance, but we've already been involved with a. Uh, I'll wrap it up. We've already been involved with a petition for the U.S. Patent and Trade Office to help them improve their patent search, which is why patents take 18 months for them to search because a human is doing it, and we want to automate that process. The the collo colloquial term is robotic process automation. Um, and what we're doing is we're taking all of the labor that goes into researching in the right way and letting a robot do it so humans can be empowered by that information to make better human decisions. It's not our goal to replace humans. It's our goal to hand them better tools so they can make better decisions more efficiently and more accurately uh, and impact lots of industries. Looks like my time's up.